So I found this SD card in the bottom of my camera bag. There's only half of it left. Look at that, I've got half an SD card. How does that happen? The back is missing, but it's all one piece, but... Hmm. What is good everyone and welcome back to yet another video. Now, I just wanna quickly apologize before we go any further for the lack of uploads in the past few days. Usually I upload weekly, but I've been on a trip up in Wales. I've been filming and doing all sorts of stuff. Yeah, I just wanna apologize for the lack of uploads, but we are now back, back to normal, back to the weekly upload schedule. Now, over the years, I have received countless messages and even emails requesting that I make a video taking you guys through my step-by-step -step process when it comes to editing photos in Adobe Lightroom. So a few weeks back, I went onto Instagram and messaged a few of my favorite photographers and asked if they would kindly send me their raw photos so I could make this video for us all today. I will link all of their Instagram accounts down in the description below so you guys can go over, check them out, give them a follow. They make some incredible content. Some of the photographers' photos that I'm editing today are just insane and I could only dream of getting photos like this. So big shout out to all of you guys for sending me in your pictures you know who you are. So let's jump into photo number one. So first up, we have my boy Dominic from Germany. Now, Dominic, if you're watching this, next time you go to a location like this, please bring me with you, okay? So this photo was taken in a place called Thor Thoringen? Th Thuringen? I think I've pronounced that wrong. Whenever I see photos like this, like really low fog over the trees, it just reminds me of like something from Twilight. I don't know, I just get that vibe. Every time I see low fog over the trees, I'm like, Twilight. <laughs> so let's take a look at my edit side by side of Dominic's photo. I'm gonna give you guys a little walkthrough about how I did this and what sort of effects I used. Again, Dominic, you absolutely nailed this photo. The exposure, the composition. I love the foreground of the leaves. Dominic, you absolutely killed this. So I did increase the contrast by quite a lot. I brought down those blacks and I played around with the S curve just to try and get the balance right in the shadows between the trees and sort of the train track, just so it wasn't too dark, but I kind of kept that balance where you could still see quite a lot of detailing in the trees. I didn't really want to bring out the shadows too much because then I would have got an overload of detail detail and sharpness in the trees and I wanted to keep it quite dark. I did then do quite a bit of tweaking to the colors to make the oranges look a little bit more red and then I made the yellows in the trees look a little bit more blue aqua. I did this by just touching up the blue, red and green primaries and also in the HSL tabs I played around with the oranges and in the yellows to give it that color manipulation. Once I had done all my touching up in Lightroom I still wanted to give the photo a little bit more character so I then went and opened it into Photoshop and added a dust and scratches overlay that I found from Google. I just added that over the top and I used the screen blending mode just to kind of turn the opacity down for it. So it wasn't too noticeable, but when you actually look at it, you can very, very faintly see this sort of like old dusty scratch marks on the photo just to make it look a little bit more old fashioned. So I thought that gave it a really, really cool sense of character. And then that was the final edit. So Dominic, thank you so much for sending me this. So next time you go to this location, Dominic, I beg you, just take me with you. I will fly over to Germany, okay? I'm not joking. Coming in at photo number two, we have my guy Alex from San Francisco. Fun little story. Well, the first time I met Alex, I was at Golden Gate Bridge and I was trying to take a shot and I had no one to help me take the shot. And I saw Alex and then Alex saw me and he was like, you need a hand? And I was like, yeah, and then that was it. So thank you, Alex. <laughs> Alex, a lot like me, loves to take rooftop photos, especially in San Francisco. And he has sent me in this absolutely bonkers shot. But Alex, I do not know what you're on. I don't know what you're standing on. It looks like a pole from the, from the looks of things. I don't know how you got up there, but please tell me what that is. Because if that's a pole and you've climbed up those white beams, you are a fucking nutcase, okay? You guys know me, I absolutely love editing rooftop photos. So this shot that Alex sent me, honestly, the shot itself was just sick. I didn't have to do that much touching up to it whatsoever. So firstly, I started off by giving myself a base to edit this photo by using one of my urban presets, my rooftop presets, which I've used specifically for photos like this. What that 
done, that gave me a really, really good base to start working from and being able to amend any of the colors and the shadows. You will notice I did desaturate the blues by quite a lot and then brought up the oranges. Again, by playing around with the HSL tabs, I made the oranges look a lot more red than sort of yellow and then also brought up the reds to kind of make the reds pop, especially on the helipad and on the top of the buildings like the red lights. I really, really wanted to emphasize the coloring. I didn't want to take any attention away from the three buildings in the middle of the photo. So what I did was I drew a radial mask tool straight across the middle of the photo and then I brought up the exposure, the highlights and the shadows so that I still got a lot of the detail in the buildings. Obviously, as they kind of traveled down, they started to get darker as they kind of met the street. So I wanted to keep that detailing in the buildings right throughout the photo. So I used the radial mask tool and then that was the final edit. So really, really simple. And Alex, I'm telling you, this photo is insane. You're a nutcase. <laughs> Next up, we have Mike, or some of you may know him as North Borders. Now, Mike sent me in two photos, both very, very different, but again, just outstandingly good. Don't even need to do any editing to either of these photos, like in itself, the photos, again, like every single picture in this series is incredible. But again, Mike did send me in two amazing photos. I'm gonna put them up on the screen now. Photo number one of the Porsche, I'm guessing was taken outside a petrol garage in Australia, because that is where he is from. And the second photo, is in Mount Fiji at some ridiculous time. Is that sunrise or sunset? Looks like sunset. But anyway, thank you, Mike, for sending me both of these photos. I had so much fun editing them. We're gonna start off with picture number one of the sports car. So when I first saw this raw photo, before I'd even edited it, I knew it was gonna look so sick. I started off by using my Urban Killer preset as a base because this preset was very, very dark. It brought out a lot of the oranges and especially the blues. So straight off the back, the preset itself helped out a lot. Much like the previous photo I edited, I desaturated a lot of the pinks and the purples purples and the greens and then one thing that I did also do was I dialed the reds more towards like an orange color because I just wanted to make the headlight pop a bit more I brought up the luminance and everything in the lighting especially on the petrol garage and then once I'd done that and dialed in all my colors I then moved into Photoshop I then added two or three smoke sort of fog overlays just overlapping each other on top of the photo I brought down the opacity by about 20% because I didn't want to make it look too obvious and I just wanted to add a little bit more drama make it look epic and then I I added a red light flare in just ever so slightly on the back headlight because I felt like with this photo it looked sort of like it gave me like a Star Wars vibe like a Darth Vader vibe because of that red headlight sort of reminded me of a lightsaber so I bought in this like really cool like really slick little light flare and then put that in at the back of the car and then that was my final edit Mike I hope you like this one I wish I took this picture just awesome awesome photo so props to you photo number two is probably the coolest street view I've ever seen hands down in my entire life. Sun setting just to the right behind the buildings. We've got a freaking mountain in the background and then we've got these really, really cool lanterns kind of following down the street. Bro, I've never seen a mountain that close to a street before. I mean, I've not been to many places like this, which is why I think this just amazes me so much. So what I wanted to do with this picture, I really wanted to make it look like it was prime golden hour sunset. So what I did was I bought up quite a lot of the blues and the oranges, kind of like give it that orange and teal vibe. And then I brought down the shadows. I really wanted to emphasize the detail and the color in the mountain and at the sky, just at the background. So what I did again, I used two separate radial mask tools, one for dead in the middle of the photo and one just over the sky. And then I played a Around a bit with the exposure and the contrast turn down the shadows in the sky to make it look a little bit more moody make it look like the clouds were sort of like thunderstorm because again it's not got clear skies in this photo there's no clear skies it's quite a lot of clouds so having that contrast between like mountain kind of looks like it's about to rain and then we've got like a sunset in on the right i feel like it's so many different moods in one photo which is why i think this picture in itself is just incredible and for the icing on the cake i then went into photoshop again <laughs> and i added a very very slight snow overlay in the sky and just above the street to make it look like it had just started snowing and to emphasize the size of the mountain, make the photo look a little bit more moody. I didn't want to like make it look too over edited, but if you actually looked at the photo for long enough, you could notice some sort of snow and it kind of looks like it started snowing like 10 minutes ago. That was my final edit. Again, Mike, thank you so much for sending me in these photos. I had so much fun editing them. Next time you go, dude, again, please take me with you because that'd be amazing. <laughs> we are getting by extremely quickly here. Next up is a photo by no other than Hayden Pedersen. For anyone that doesn't know who Hayden is, he is a YouTuber, amazing creative photographer. Go and check him out. I'll link all of his socials and his YouTube down below. Hayden has sent me this picture. 
it blows my mind. How have you done that? I need to do that. I need locations like this in London. I need friends that can ride motorcycles and pose for me because this picture is absolutely insane. Straight off the back, I'm gonna put this down. <laughs> Again, it is a night photo. I really love editing night photography. When I first saw this, I was like, I'm gonna be here for hours because there were so many presets that I've made to do with night photography and like night presets. I really could not choose one whatsoever. <laughs> the exposure again in this picture was on point. You absolutely nailed it. I ran one of my night presets on it called Gotham. Uh, what that preset is, it, again, very, very dark. I made it specifically for nighttime shots. One thing you will notice with this preset is that it makes quite a lot of the yellows in the photo more towards like a dark orange red sort of color. Again, I bought down those highlights by quite a lot so I could keep the detail in the buildings and also to bring out a lot more color in the light trail behind the guy on the bike. Again, this photo reminds me of something from Star Wars. I don't know why I keep referencing Star Wars in this video, but this picture is just so epic. I might even make this a thumbnail, to be honest. That was Hayden's submission. Thank you so much for sending me this picture and I will come to Australia next year. I promise you because I want to get pictures like this. Next up, we have Daryl Scott Walker, and he is a fellow photographer from the UK. He has taken this absolutely amazing photo in the Faroe Islands. To be honest, this place looks like something from Jurassic World, and Daryl has so many photos from the Faroe Islands, which I am very jealous about. Honestly, it looks like a land that people forgot. It looks like there should be dinosaurs living there or something. <laughs> anyway, Daryl has taken this epic photo of this almost mini horse shoe road going through the mountains in the Faroe Islands. Again, very, very cool. If you guys don't know me by now, but my favorite type of photo to edit is when it's very dark, there's a storm about to come, overcast weather, no sunshine, because when it's overcast weather, you get a really, really nice soft light coming through the clouds. I just love shooting in bad weather conditions. You guys might think I'm off my head for saying that, but rain, storm is a bit of me. So that is why I really enjoyed editing this photo. As you can see, from the before and after of my edit from Daryl's photo, I actually made the picture darker. I brought down the exposure, I brought down the shadows, I crushed the blacks, I brought up the whites, and I brought down the highlights just to bring out more detail in the sky and those thunderstorm clouds. Once I had finished doing that, I then played around with the HSL tabs. I made the greens a bit more orange, and then I made the blues a little bit more aqua. I don't know if you can tell. And then I brought down the luminance in the blues and also brought down the luminance in the greens and then brought up the luminance minutes in the oranges just to kind of desaturate those greens proper desaturate the yellows and then have this really really nice contrast between like a dark orange and blue almost again orange and teal vibe for me when I see pictures like this and it looks like it's about to chuck it down with rain I really go more towards the cooler tones to make it look a little bit more dark and menacing almost like something from a horror film once I'd finished touching up the colors I then added another linear mask to the sky to make the sky look a lot more darker and then I added a radial mask to the end of the road as the road got smaller. I added a little radial mask over the top of that to kind of brighten up the road so it doesn't get lost in the hills. Finally, I then put the photo in to Photoshop. I added a rain overlay to make it look like it just started pouring down with rain. I added some water droplets to make it look like we've got some water, some raindrops on the lens and I then put in a few birds just coming over the hills. That was the final photo. I really, really love the vibe of this picture. Thank you, Daryl, for submitting and that is the end of the first episode of me editing your photos. Now, in two weeks time, I'm going to be doing another one of these videos, but this time I would like to edit your photos. So I'm going to leave an email address on the screen right here. I would like you guys to send me in some of your best raw photos for me to edit for episode two. Literally had so much fun doing this, which is why I want all of you guys to send me in your best raw photos. I'll go through them all and I will pick probably about six or seven and I will choose to edit them on camera like I have done today. So send them in to this email address and I will be doing that during the next two or three weeks. Send me in your photos. I am so excited to see what photos you guys have taken over the past years, uh, depending on how long you've been a photographer for. Um, but yeah, send me in your best ones and thank you guys so much for watching. If you did like this video, don't forget to leave a like, rate and subscribe. If you are new, I will see you all very, very soon in the next one. Peace.